on your own, if you're just tuning into this first video, don't don't watch right now. Do these three problems first and then come back. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go through these ones fairly quickly. We add 5 to both sides, leaving this as 2x is less than or equal to 28. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I end up with x is less than or equal to 14. And that's my solution. Notice again, I did not switch the sign because I did not divide by a negative number. Next problem, I'm subtracting 5 by both sides. That leaves me with negative 6y is less than or equal to negative 21. I'm going to do the opposite operation of negative 6 times y, which would be to divide by negative 6. So I'm dividing both sides by negative 6. The negative 6 is canceled. That leaves me with y. I divided by a negative sign, so I'm going to remember to flip the inequality. And then I have 21 divided by 6. Now, 21 divided by 6, that doesn't divide evenly. Um, so I'm just going to reduce this fraction. Uh, these are both negatives, so this is going to be a positive number. Uh, and both of these have factors of 3. So 21 goes, 3 goes into 21 7 times, and 6 go, 3 goes into 6 2 times. <clears throat> So the answer here is y is greater than or equal to 7 halves. If you did this one as a decimal, which you could technically do as well, you could also write that as 3.5. So I suggest you just do it as a fraction. It's much easier that way. The last one here, notice that the negative 1 fourth is on the outside of these parentheses, cueing us to distribute. So the result we get is negative 1 fourth p times negative 1, or excuse me, plus negative 1 fourth times negative 12, which is a positive 3, is greater than negative 2. Now you will notice that this problem is just like the other two now. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, leaving me with negative 1 fourth p is greater than negative 2. And then, because this is a fraction out here when multiplying, I don't want to do divided by negative 1 fourth. Dividing by a fraction is always kind of silly. Uh, remember what we did uh, in previous with the equations was we multiply, well, multiply by the reciprocal. So if we flip the one fourth and multiply that, it would be multiplied by negative four. So we're going to multiply this by negative four. I do that because the negative 4 is cancel, leaving just the p is greater than, and then this is positive 8. Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I multiplied by a negative number, which means I need to flip that, so it should be less than 8. If you have any questions of these, again, feel free to leave them in the comments. I can also You can also reach me uh, in class, okay? So let's move on and do a couple more examples. So here's an example of an equation or inequality with variables on both sides of the inequality sign. So notice on the left-hand side, we have the 6x, and on the right-hand side, we have the 2x. When we're solving these, just like we did with an equation, we want to get the variable terms on the same side. So I need to remove this term. And you always remove the terms with addition and subtraction. We need to make this 0. So since this is a positive 2x, I'm going to remove it by subtracting 2x. And when I do that, I should end up with 4x minus 7 is greater than 17. And again, I'm going to make, I'm going to make my 7s with little arms there because then it makes it easier to see that they're not greater than signs. Now that all of the variable terms are on the same side, we can just do this problem like we did the previous ones. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. I get 4x is greater than 24. And then I divide by 4, and I get x is greater than 6. That's my solution. So sometimes you're going to need to get variable terms on the same side. Uh, there may be some examples in your exercises today where you're going to have to distribute first, right? But we can do that. It's just like the ones on the previous one. So I don't have an example of those. The last set of examples that we're going to do here um, are some inequalities that have some special cases. So it is possible that when solving, you completely eliminate the variable term from the inequality.
meaning I subtract something away and it becomes zero and it's just gone. When this happens, there are two possible situations. The answers are either going to be no solutions or it's going to be all real numbers as your solution. The case when that happens depends on what you get at the end. So let's do an example of each of these so that we can see what happens. So the first question over there on the left, uh, I notice that I've got the 7 being multiplied here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that distribution first. So rewriting the left-hand side because that stays the same. This becomes 14x minus 21. Now watch what happens on this step. I have variables on the left and right hand sides of the equation. I need to remove one of those to put it to the other side. So I need to remove this term on the right so that I can get all of the terms on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 14x to do that. Now that means that I also have to subtract 14x over here, but notice what happens. That becomes 0 and that becomes 0. So the only thing I have left is 5 is less than negative 21. And then we have to look at this inequality and say, does that make sense? Is that true or false? Is 5 smaller than negative 21? And I think obviously we can say at this point that 5 is definitely not smaller than 21. So this is a false statement. And when you have a false statement, the answer is no solutions. So when you completely eliminate the x term, when those both become 0, and the inequality we have left is false, it's no solutions. Now what that probably means is that if it's true, it's all real numbers. So let's do this example over here so you can see that. Again, I'm going to distribute that 6 first. So the next first step of my equation, inequality, excuse me, is 12x minus 1 is greater than 12x minus 6. Notice again, let's get the terms on the same side. And when I do that, the x's completely become 0 and they go away. So I'm left with negative 1 is greater than negative 6. And so again, there's no x terms, so we have to ask ourselves, true or false? Is negative 1 larger than negative 6? And that's true. Negative 1 is larger than negative 6. Therefore, the solution is all real numbers. Or if you're really fancy, you can make the all real numbers symbol which is, looks like an R, but it's got two bars to it. Uh, I should also mention over here, if you want to be fancy, you can use the math symbol for no solutions, which is a zero with a slash through it, no solutions. So you've seen these two examples. Again, this is the end of this video. There is a set of questions for you on your Canvas lesson. Please go do those questions now, and then come back. The next video in the series will answer them. And then do one last question, this time in context. We'll do a story problem. So go ahead and do those now.